Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners. Again, good morning. I'd like to begin by uh, offering or, or adding our welcome to Senator Schwartz. Gail, it's great to have you here with us today. Thank you for taking the time out of a very busy schedule to join us. Representative Eddie DeHill has also been a key piece to our success in Colorado, and we thank both the, the Senator and the Representative for their strong support of the railroad. What I'm going to do this morning, with your permission, uh, Commissioner Randall, is it was a time where, with my board and with the staff, we sort of sat down and looked at the last six years. And there was a lot of things that happened, and you know, the good news is Leo just gave you the Reader's Digest version. This is going to be a little bit longer, so bear with me. Before I start, I want to recognize one person in this room that really helped me, particularly in the last couple of years, but has been on this railroad ride with us for six years. That's my wife, Susie Salazar, back there in the corner. There was times she wondered why, why we did this, but in the end, she really helped me get through the last couple of years. And between her and Marvin and Leo and Stephanie and others, we came through pretty well. What I want to do is review a couple of numbers and what's happened in the last six years. When we came aboard, Frank Turner, our president of, of our board and president of the company, you know, he rode the train just shortly before we took over uh, as, as in the management company. And then in early May, he came out and, and took another ride and we looked at the track. And he came back to the board and said, you know guys, I'm not sure what we did here. This track is in really pretty bad shape. With Frank's leadership and the rest of the board and as president of the company, over the time period from sort of FY5 and 6 to date, we put $5.531 million into the track. For those of you that haven't ridden the train recently and for American Heritage Railroad, I'm pleased to report to you, Mr. Harper, that the track's in good shape. I'll give you some more numbers on that in a little bit. In locomotives, over time, we put $1.530 million into locomotives. Again, what we've got right now is four operating and certified locomotives. Our friends at FRA have become our technical partners, particularly on the locomotive and car side. And we have the fifth locomotive in process thanks to the efforts of the friends and, and, and their team in build, rebuilding the 463. And theoretically, we'll have five locomotives available for you uh, by the end of March in 2012. Passenger cars have done pretty well over the last six years. They all are red. That's one, the one thing we did, Cam, in your, in your memory. But we, you know, we have a consistent look, and it's a market appeal that we think is pretty good. And on passenger cars, we spent a nominal amount of money of only 335K. Now, the good news is they're in good shape. The bad news is it should be nice to have new parlor cars and more capability. But right now, we have 19 cars, four cabooses, and two passenger guns. And the passenger guns were recently rebuilt by the Friends. Again, the Friends of the Cumberson Toltec is one heck of an asset for this railroad, and their labor rate is really exceptional. I like that labor rate of zero dollars. <laughs> we have operated, and particularly this year, but over a six-year period, we worked real hard in track improvements and locomotives and cars, and we somehow over the period of time managed to avoid <coughs> getting ourselves into derailments and things. We've had our events over six years, by, by all means. In fact, uh, one of my now board members, Bill Hume, was in the governor's office working for Governor Richardson. And he came up one day, uh, he helped us a lot in the, in, in the Richardson administration with the New Mexico legislature. He came up one day and he wanted to check out the, the railroad. And we went and put a locomotive on the deck in the Chama Yard and derailed it in Bill's honor so he could watch us re-rail it. And that's my story, Mr. Hume, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, as Leo mentioned, we have some Christmas trains coming up. December 3rd, we'll have two trains out of Chama. Uh, Dulce Schools just recently booked 80 passengers for, for the train out of Chama on, on December 3rd. And out of Antonito, as Leo mentioned, we have the 150th anniversary uh, Conejos County train. We'll run that this Saturday, the day after tomorrow. 
And we have about 350 people from, I think, the last count that Nick gave me. And, is, and you know, it's pretty neat that the community has shown up to support us. 32,000 passengers for the year turned out to be okay. We wish it was more, but we clearly, in 2011, were in a recovery phase. We went through the Lobato Trestle thing in 2010, and it got pretty tough. Going back to the track, since 2006, we've installed 46,384 tires. There's a guy in this room that really needs some exceptional recognition for his leadership and for his dedication to this railroad. And that guy is John Matthews. Now, over my career, in many, many lives of my career, I've hired a lot of consultants, but never in my whole life have I had a consultant like John Matthews and how he managed to get the train crew pulled together. At one point, he had 24 people working on this project, but John Matthews is an exceptional asset and friend of the Cumberson Toltec Scenic Railroad. The amount of hours he works and the number of hours he bills us for is inconsistent. I've always worried about John's arithmetic, but I can assure you the number of hours that this guy runs, because he runs around with Marvin way too much. When you're doing 14 and 16 hour days on this railroad, which is par for the course during the season, John turned out to be one of those people that he too fell in love with this railroad, just like a couple of others, others of us have done over time. We have 395 switch ties in. We are ballast. We've managed to do 95.82 miles of ballast throughout the years, and we still have a ways to go. Uh, we've done 32.77 miles without ballast, but the bottom line is we're not done with the track project. Despite Frank Turner's best efforts, we still have work to do. This year was nothing more than the maintenance year. The good news is our maintenance program works, but we still have some capital investment to make. We did the Martinez Point thing with, with John and Marvin leading that, where we actually crushed rock right on site and cut our costs dramatically in terms of what it cost us to get ballast, good ballast on the railroad. Uh, total number of, of tons of ballast dumped to 74,103 ton over our, our tour of duty on the railroad over six years. We, we have dumped it all across the railroad and we had a lot of soft spots. Every winter, we'd go into winter and we'd pray, and then it would snow and we'd pray some more. But for the first time in the last couple, two years, maybe even three, we predicted where the soft spots were, would be and guess what? They weren't near as soft. We keep putting rock in there, but again, the track crew has done an exceptional job of, of overseeing that issue. Ties for the future, we're still going to need about 18,000 ties, we guesstimate, that needs to be done in the next few years. So, Alan, as American Heritage Railroad comes in, the good news is we've got it down pretty well. We have a good crew, we have well trained people, we're doing it safely. There's still more work to do, and, and we're there to help you understand what the mission will be down the road here. Again, John Matthews is one of the heroes of Cumberson Toltec in my book, and I really appreciate his efforts. Over time, we've continuously worked hard. Our company from day one was committed to doing everything we could to hire locally at either end of the railroad. In 2011, we continued in that tradition, and we, we've made some great strategic hires. In the last couple of years, in 2010 and 2011, we had the track program down, we had locomotives down, we had the shops down, we had a, a lot of our operating environment pretty well settled in, and in 2010, we began to, to, to work on the business case. Since 2010, we hired a guy like Roger Hogan. Roger came in, and his initial mission was to take pictures, and that's really his whole mission. But he takes good pictures, but more importantly, he and Nick Quintana here oversaw the development from top to bottom of our new web presence. The